Hello friends, welcome to Square Plans, where creative planning and organization comes to life. I'm Stephanie, and today we're going to be designing a themed planner spread in my horizontal layout for April and my classic happy planner. So come play with me. And I've got this highlighter here ready to go. As well as these watercolor creams that I may use. I have this stamp set of lowercase letters as well as some chalk ink I'll be using as well. These washi tapes that I pulled, this Happy Planner sticker book, and this Anna Bean Paper Co. sticker book that I'll pull from. And this is the third week of the April Planable Challenge, and this week's theme is Get Earthy. So if you'd like to participate, go ahead and post your spreads up on Instagram using the hashtag Planable April 2023. We'd love to see what you come up with. Okay, y'all, let's go ahead and put down some wax paper and get started on this week's design. I knew I wanted to use a specific set of stickers for this week's design, but I hadn't really figured out how or, you know, what exactly before starting. So, Definitely will be building the idea from scratch here as far as how things will go on the layout. So I just dropped in a few of these potted plants and some plants in the ground for this get earthy theme. I thought kind of a gardening, you know, style theme would be a good way to interpret this idea. And just doing a little bit of layering here with the stickers so that these two potted plants sort of match. Originally, I was thinking to bring out the red and the yellow tones from these tomatoes and kind of make that a highlight of the entire spread. But now that I've got it on the sheet, I'm not sure I can really carry a full spread with that color scheme. I'm going to keep laying things down and trying to figure out how I might work in a specific color scheme for this idea. Maybe even not using those tomatoes in the process and see where we go. So this spread sort of ends up being more of a traditional horizontal layout from my 10 layout designs. It's a random feel, but it definitely has a symmetry going as I start building things out. I'm trying to basically put a little moment of design or decor on each day, a moment for a focus area, and I'll also be putting in a checklist as well on each day. So this spread doesn't really have any other defining qualities as far as, you know, being a border or being, you know, in the corners or whatever. This one is definitely more functional in that way, but also will have a bit of a random feel, which you'll see as I pull things together here. And what I decided to do down here on the This Week area is kind of make a big collage of all of the different vegetables that were, well, fruits and vegetables that were on the sheet. Just trying to find a place where I feel like they would work all together I was having trouble thinking of ways to incorporate them with the other more garden specific stickers. I felt like grouping them together was a better way to use all of those stickers and make something more substantial as far as the decor is concerned. So I've placed them all there. I'm cutting up a few of them just to give me a little bit more variety as far as how they're laid in. But as you can see, it's like a pile of fruits and vegetables there that you might be pulling from your own garden. And I'm trying to use pretty much all the stickers. There were two that I really didn't find a place for in the end, including those galoshes or boots. They were just a little bit too bold, I felt like, in this theme. So a lot of pink color, pink beige color that doesn't really go with anything else so decided to leave those on the sheet as well as one of the pea pods that I couldn't fit in.
I thought I might bring in some boxes from that same sticker book, but it doesn't look like they really work out with the theme. It looks like they're mixed in with some of the other florals that I'm not using on each of the boxes as far as the decor. So we'll leave those and use some simpler boxes from Anna Bean Paper Co's sticker book. And now I'm working with the washi, trying to figure out how I might bring that in. I did pull a red and yellow washi to start, but along with this mixed color washi that has tones of orange yellow to brown to red that I thought would tie in well with that color scheme. So I'm just trying some things out now with the two washies that I pulled. And the more I'm looking at it, the more I'm not sure about this red. It's, uh, I don't know. And then the yellow as well. I really don't know if there's enough of it to carry this entire spread with that just solid red and yellow washi tape. So we'll see. I'm going to try a few other combinations of things, mixing and matching. I cut up that one multicolored washi tape into segments because it was pre-segmented, if you will, on the washi tape. And I'm just using those individual segments, which is why I kind of went with more shorter pieces on the spread. It might have been nicer to have some longer washi tape moments, but I think that the shorter pieces do add a bit of decor to the spread. So we're going to work with that. And I'm just mixing in the browns with the red tones and the orange tones from that washi tape. And now I'm bringing in some boxes from Anna Bean's book. I pulled this because it had nice, solid colored red and yellow colorful boxes, which I thought would be a really good addition here. Um, but then kind of pulled back on the yellow and I'm gonna try to work in a little bit of the red since I feel like the washi tape is a little bit better in the red tone than in the yellows. Also too, I think the red and the brown just work better together. Not quite as vibrant a contrast as the yellow. So I'm gonna pull those in and add just a few red boxes here again to add those nice clean lines and reiterate the red in the color scheme. So in the end, the color scheme tends to be more brown and red with a little bit of pops of color, but I'm really sticking with a two color theme in general, if you can kind of see as we go along. So now I'm ready to start doing some things on the actual sheets. Move over a few pieces and start to play with these stamps that I got at the stationary pal haul that I did last year. I've been playing around with them a little bit here and there, but I haven't really used them on a spread yet. So I'm excited to try those out here as some like quote decor on the spread since I really couldn't find any quotes as stickers that worked with what I wanted to do for this theme. So I'm just using some chalk ink from Versa Ink um, chalk inks are really great because they don't seep through the paper. Uh, I found this collection at Hobby Lobby and it has 12 smaller stamp pads that you can use with different color variations, which has been nice just to have that option. And you can stamp right in your planner without it bleeding through. It's really good to have mixed media options there with the chalk ink. And now I'm just hand stamping in the quote down to earth to kind of tie in with the theme of get earthy. I'm not doing a super clean job. I will say that these stamps are fun and cute, but they're really not that specific as far as placement of the stamp base that you actually use on the wooden dowel. So it's really hard to line these guys up. There's no way to really see where exactly you're stamping until it's been stamped. I'm kind of working with it that way. I'm trying to make that part of the quote itself and the irregularity of it, I think really helps more with the theme of earthy, a little bit more organic.
So I went ahead and stamped in Get Earthy as well on the other side, going with the theme. And finally, I'm going to do one more small one just at the top that says Grow. I just have a napkin down there to clean off the bottoms of the stamps as I go so that the stamp ink doesn't transfer. I did find that just tapping very lightly instead of pushing down too hard on the stamp pad was helpful to not get ink in and around the edges of the stamp. But I did have some that transferred over to the paper, which I'll clean up later with a white opaque pen. So now that I got that in, I am going to move over the other elements of the spread. I'm going to start off with some washi tape down here in the corner as well as white out the bottom line just so it's a lot cleaner when I move over the big cluster of fruits and vegetables. And while I'm doing that, let's go ahead and try out these watercolor creams to add a base for the garden, kind of reiterate the get earthy idea. So all you need to do with those watercolor creams is color them onto the page like a crayon. So that's how I started, and then I blended it out with a blending brush just to smooth out some of the roughness of the strokes. And then I finally went in with a little bit of a wet paint brush, a water brush actually. I didn't put any water into it, but the brush tip was already wet so that I could just finish smoothing out some of those rougher edges without there being a lot of water on the page and bleeding into the paper. And that worked out really good. So just a small amount was just enough to smooth it out a little bit more like I wanted it to. It takes nothing more than that. It's a pretty easy way to add a little bit of color as a background. I really like those watercolor creams. They don't seep in and just enable you to put a nice smooth element of background color anywhere on your page without having to worry about bleed through. So I did like that a lot. And if you need to manipulate it a little bit, it is water soluble. So of course you can make adjustments there. So I went ahead and laid in the rest of the stickers that I had and I made an adjustment there on the right hand side with the water pail. I just changed it so it looks like it's pouring into the quote, which I liked a little bit better. And now I'm on the other side and repeating that process at the bottom with the washi tape and whiting out behind that as well as the clear sticker. Here I felt like it would be nice to have a little bit of symmetry with the pouring out look that the water pail had here with the seed packet. So. I went ahead and did that and then drew in some small brown seeds with the highlighter I'll be using later. Yeah, just to give again a little bit more of a selling of that kind of pouring out idea. I may go through and actually put some water droplets down the road on the paint pail maybe after the week begins. I definitely had some ideas that I wanted to incorporate after the fact so do check my Instagram to see what changes I had made to the spread after this video if you want to see some updates. Mainly textural things and just a few little details that I think will help enhance this spread a bit. And again, I repeated that whole process with building out the dirt in the ground below the sticker with those watercolor creams and and just adjusted some of these groupings as well to make them feel a little bit more connected to themselves with the washi tape and the stickers. This one here, I had a little bit of trouble of really finding something that I thought was working well. I made quite a few adjustments to it, but in the end, ended up being pretty happy with the final result. And now I'm going to go ahead and put in those check boxes using this brown highlighter I got actually from Daiso. 
They finally put out some new colors in their highlighters, which is a really nice set. So um, if you do have a Daiso near you, do check them out. I'll try to find it online in the description below and add that link so you can find it if you need to shop online. And that will do it, friends. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up down below. Also, too, go ahead and leave me a comment if you'd like to get in touch. And think about subscribing to my channel if you haven't already, if you'd like to see more of my videos. Thank you guys so much for watching. I really appreciate it. And we will see you next time. Bye!